welcome to A Train 9. Uh, Scritty here, taking a break from my SEO stuff to have a look at this game. And the reason I've decided to have a look at A Train 9, and particularly its English UK release, or if American release, or its English speaking release, is that it was handled so piss poorly by the developers and the publishers of the game. A Train, for those of you who don't know, um, has been around for a long time. It, the original A-Train predates SimCity. A-Train 3 was released in uh, Europe and America as A-Train in, I think it was 92 or 93, but the original A-Train, which was A-Train 1 in, in Japan, was sometime in the 80s. Um, so this isn't a rip-off of another sort of game. A-Train was one of the originals. Um, I haven't gone into the whole chronology of it to work out whether it was the actual original or not, but it, it, this is where it is. And this is A Train 9, and I think this is the 13th, uh, or it might be the 14th version of A Train that's come out. Uh, the previous A Train that came out was A Train HD or A Train 8, depending on whether you got it on 360 or um, PC, and prior to that, various other incarnations going back. And they've all tried to add a bit graphically and, and do a few bits and bobs. The main premise of the game is a city builder where you really just control the transport, and the city revolves around the transport infrastructure primarily that you build up around it. Um, having said that, you can buy buildings, and early on in the game, buying buildings such as apartment blocks or businesses and investing in those helps to seed an area and encourage people to come there. So if you build a few businesses then people who work elsewhere might be encouraged to come to work in your new businesses. But that's that's a secondary part of the game. Without the transport none of it will work. Okay now there's a few issues here before we get any further there are three things that I know that I spent a long time when I first got this game trying to work out and I'll go through them one at a time. Firstly, the game as it comes boxed in every version I have, and I, I downloaded it from a site before it was available in box versions in the UK, legitimate I may add, and then I bought the, uh, when I saw it available in my local game store for 5 99 I bought it again. And as of today, which is the 2nd of February 2014, there are still several copies of it available in my local game store for about, I think it's some of the 2 for a tenner or 3 for a tenner uh, section. And it's an absolute bargain. Uh, however, both of those versions crashed on the 1st of September in the first year. Well, it didn't crash, the game ended when I was presented with a $10 billion or yen or, or euro, whatever the symbol is in this game, bill, which I couldn't pay. And game, the game over sign came up. Uh, I don't know whether that was something that was on purpose, whether this was originally intended to be a demo version that accidentally got released and that was the way of ending the demo because it's very specific. It's nine months into the game, 1st of September, the nine month start bang, game ends. You need the patch to correct this and I will link to the patch underneath um, otherwise it'll happen. There's lots of other things that are bad if you don't have the patch and we'll get into those in a minute. Second one, second issue I read a lot about is that you can't control individual trains. Whenever you change a route then everything else that goes down that route will suddenly start following whatever the last settings was so it's impossible to control control individual trains. I'll resolve that and that'll be the first thing I do once I get into the game. And the third thing is that it's rather limited and that this translation is very very poor. The documentation with it is worthless. I mean it is worthless. It says things like that, I'm paraphrasing now, if you want to make um, a town a success with transport then supply the town with transport and it will be a success. That That is the sort of level of, of the manual that comes with the game. There's a HTML, a lot of links as well, that either go live to a site or HTML folder on your hard drive and you download it. And that may add a few more words and a couple of pictures, but it is also really poor. So my main aim with this Let's Play is to resolve that third issue and provide you players with decent tutorials to the game. I am not an expert. I played the game for tens and tens of hours now, and a great deal of enjoyment out of it, but part of this will be me learning as I go along. What I did do very early on is decided I wanted to create my own maps, which I'll be showing later on. It's very, very simple to create your own maps. It's about the one thing that's, that's, that's easiest. Once you've put the patch on, all these menu options will show up correctly. Rather than having... Um, th these, this could be a bit confusing before the patch. After the patch, these now show 
uh, the correct stuff. I click on custom game and I have this one. I've just called it just the sun because all I've got is a solar panel and a, and a factory. And I'm going to begin custom game. Off we go. It takes a few seconds to load. A few things I'll say about this game while it's loading is that the um, the uh, economic infrastructure of the game is extremely good and the more I get into it the more I realize how excellent it is. I'm going to click down here and pause it and just explain where we are. We're on an empty map. The map is huge. It puts um, the latest SimCity to shame. The game doesn't show any agents other than your own so you won't see other people walking around, you won't see other traffic walking around but they do exist. If you click on a train, it will show how many people are in it. If you click on a bus, it will show how many people are in it. If you click on a lorry, it will tell you what cargo it's carrying, stuff like that. But you won't actually see those people on the bus or arriving and queuing up. Um, for some people, this could ruin immersion. But for me, it just makes it a nice, clean simulation. They are there. We just don't see the graphic angly fangles of, of showing them. For some people, that's a killer. If that's going to be a killer for you, then be, be warned. It, that could be an issue. Okay, so what we've got here is, first thing I'm going to show you is this, Options menu. Click Options. Now, if you've once again, if, as long as you've um, Im implemented the patch, and it's about 300 megs, these options will be slightly differently named. And you want to click on the middle one called Graphs. By default, most of these are unticked. If these are unticked, you will not have control, proper control of your trains, your trucks, or anything in the game. Um, it, it's almost set to kiddie setting where everything just f plays follow the leader and you won't be able to individually control your vehicles. You have to tick, I tick all of them. I've not found any um, downside to ticking all of them and this lets you really get down to configuring everything as an entity within the game. I'll, I think I'll explain this in a way. If, if you're if you've ever done any object orientated coding and you come to that and you're, you're, you're a coder writing software and you come to that from old-fashioned coding which was uh, related to the process it was process based coding rather than object based coding this will make sense every game every item in the game that you can interact with has a set of rules you don't have to go to some big list you can click on the actual item which is, can be the entrance to uh, <clears throat> a um, junction a train a bus stop a traffic light a, um, a anything a factory you click on it and you can change the way it interacts with everything around it from within that item itself and it all interacts and it all works well I've not noticed any anomalies and that just seems to work and the amount of power it gives you from thinking that it's a game that doesn't give you control over what you want to do suddenly you have to take a step back and go can out this you can do whatever you want with this game all of a sudden the whole world opens up it, that's one of the main reasons I love the game so make sure options, graphs, make sure all these are ticked and then it gives you the control you're missing. So between that and the patch you suddenly have a working game and hopefully these let's plays will be the missing point there. Um, this is going to be a very short one because for some people they'll just want to dive in after I've explained those two things and downloaded the patch and realise this is the missing links to their own enjoyment and just plough on and start playing because the gameplay from that point is quite similar to the previous um, a train games from Art Dink. So once you know that, you're laughing. A few other things I'll show you that a patch does does very well. I've pressed pause down here, so time isn't passing. If I now go to the market and go to shares, you'll see all these shares now have names, and the number of shares and the number of companies uh, is huge. I mean, they are, you have to scroll down. Um, however, the share system itself is pretty simple. Most of the shares run on sort of a sine wave of, of peaks and troughs and the idea is to buy when they're at the bottom so here would have been a good time to buy this and now will probably be about a good time to sell had I bought them back here this Mekusi Oui if it's French, I doubt if it's French this one's too high uh, but here we are, this one might be a good one to buy now Dentsu Kokashu Koka yeah, sounds like a, a, a 50s rock record Kokushu uh, I'm thinking of Alvin Stardust uh, anyway <clears throat> and it gives you the down here it gives you the graph of where you are and you can make a lot of money in shares and you need to because this map is so enormous if you're going to make the most of it without spending years of your life you're going to want to increase whatever starting budget you've given yourself or the game's given you <clears throat> dramatically so that works well so that is now complete the other thing that the patch adds <clears throat> if you go into a train 
And if I click on zero and buy, you'll see that the number of trains has increased dramatically. That's just the trains there. So I don't know how many there are, 50, 60 different trains. Um, you can also have the number of trucks has increased, the number of everything else has increased, and they all work and they're all done to the same standard. The graphical standard isn't superb, it isn't eye-poppingly brilliant, but it is pretty good and they all work really well. Okay, so rather than now start to mix this first one up, I'll keep this short, it's just over 10 minutes, just run over the points again. You need the patch, without the patch the game, unless you've got a version from somewhere I haven't even seen, the game will crash on September the 1st year one when you're presented with an enormous tax bill that no matter how well you've played it's about a hundred times more money than you've got and the game will crash and you'll go bankrupt. You need to open the game options up and give yourself the control that 99% of players are going to want by going into options, clicking on graphs and then ticking these boxes. That will open it up. Um, the third thing is for those that want to carry on I'll be continuing these let's plays over a period of time and showing you how to make some pretty complicated and sophisticated things. Part of it will be me learning as well. I'll be doing some between videos learning and trying to get all that sorted. So hopefully those two things alone will help the, the, the patch and um, this control will help so many people to, to get on with the game and get started. And then the rest of these Let's Plays should provide the missing link as far as hopefully, I'm doing air quotes now, decent um, documentation, a decent idea of how you play it goes. Alright, so it's Scritty signing off.